Hello everyone, and welcome back to Triple Crown Wargaming, where you join me, the Lore Master, as I talk to you about the new Dwarf Mountain Holds plastic figures, uh, and resin figures in fact, that uh, we've seen revealed at Adepticon last week. So there's been a lot of hype around these on a lot, lot of different groups and a lot of different places, um, and I thought that it was high time that I had a good look at them and a chat about my first impressions. Um, and so I'm going to begin with what is the plastic figure in a, in our little ensemble, which is the new, uh, what I'm going to call kind of Dwarf King slash Thane uh, kit, which I think really uh, is going to be one kit uh, from what I can tell. Now, um, I have to start off by taking a look at this uh, Lord on Shield Bearers. So, I think first and foremost, there's some things to really like. Um, I think it's really cool the fact that they've decided to up the base to the 50 by 50, um, but they've they've with this model they've really filled the space, and I think that's really important. Um, I love the shield itself, really big, really flat, um, and that's something that previous shield bearers and certainly uh, my own converted plastic shield bearer um, dwarf uh, dwarf lord is lacking is that really long flat shield all of the previous ones had more curved shield and i think that really helps with uh with giving you kind of a, a slightly more balanced looking miniature where the, the model looks like it belongs on top of the shields um so i really like that um the change to kind of having the three dwarves is okay. Uh, I would have could have lived with it, could have lived without it, but um, but I think, like I said, it fills the space nicely. So some positive stuff there. Um, other things I really like. I love the fact we've still got a kind of grudge book on there. Um, I love the fact that the guys at the front have got some nice meaty hand weapons as well and look really kind of menacing. That works really really well. Um, and overall, uh, particularly when you're looking at the image here, there's sort of the back backside the sort of the rear shot of the king i really love this cloak i love the heavy fur i love the kind of um almost mayoral um uh necklace if you like the sort of going across the shoulders with those big blue gems set in those gold those gold settings i really like that i think it's really great in fact to the guys if i was to say it's possibly my favorite part of this model um so all good however all of that said i don't know i mean there's been some really great figures that's been released so far uh, for the old world a big fan of the uh, uh royal pegasus duke um i think the uh, tomb king off of the bone dragon kit's got some really beautiful details on so i was just i don't know if my head was hoping for like something really spectacular here um and i've just if I'm being too picky, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not here to kind of lay big criticism, but um, there's some things that are really odd to me. Um, the shield bearers themselves really like the faces, really like the helmets, but I'm not too keen on these big kind of shields. If if you're of a certain vintage like me, you may remember the Power Rangers. I'm reminded of the Green Rangers shield, the original Green Power Rangers shield, is what I see here, um, and I'm not that sure. And actually, overall. The armour on the shield bearers is a bit odd. It's like a sort of hybrid of like hammer slash ironbreaker armour, but the armour plates are quite flat. Um, dare I say it, quite kind of modern looking. I don't know. I, I just I was hoping that the shield bearers would look more like the previous sort of eighth edition, if you like, plastic range of dwarves, and they don't. And I definitely feel like there's an attempt here to hybridise the kind of earlier plastics that we're still seeing, the old Dwarf Warriors, the Quarrelers, those, with those 8th edition plastics. And, I don't know, I'm just not sold on it. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm sure lots of you really love it. Um, similarly, the great weapon that the Dwarf King's carrying really doesn't do a lot for me. The angle of it isn't so great. The um, whole thing's just a bit static in that way. Um, and there is ways to kind of resolve that. And this crown that he's wearing, I definitely think this is an attempt at a crown uh, on the helmet. But again, I don't like it. I don't feel like it's artisan enough. I feel like it's a little too brutal for a dwarf. So I think that's a shame. Um, but I do think that you may be able to kind of swap some bits on with a bit of converting. Um, so if we move on to the kind of second model in this kit, which is, um, I'm going to sort of call him the, the Foot Thane or the Foot Lord. 
Um, those arms, that shield and that pointing axe, um, really cool. Really like those. Uh, I actually think they'd look much better on the guy on the shields. And if I look at the Arcane Journal cover, it reminds me of that model, but with the axe and shield arm, if you know what I mean. Like, um, yeah, That's what it looks like to me. So I think that would really help, though, because I think it would really add some movement to the shield bearer, who otherwise I think looks a bit too static. And I'm not too sold on that. Um, but back to the on-foot thing. Um, love the sort of dynamism there in the pose. Uh, really love the beard in particular. Really cool. Um, the helmet is a bit of an odd one. I feel like it's almost like two helmets in one. And I think like if it didn't have the centre piece, I think I'd enjoy it more. I really like the over-ostentatious horns. I think they're really cool. But um, I just feel like it doesn't work for me 100% with the central crest. Um yeah, I can't really put my finger on what I'm not so sure about there. Um, and the Dragon Scale Cloak, I feel like that probably should be on the Ungrim. Not necessarily on this guy. I'm just not as... feels a bit too dark elfy for me. doesn't fill me with dwarves. I always think like heavy fur and heavy pelts with dwarves. That's the vibe I get. So, um, yeah, again, I think there's lots of likeable li uh, elements here to like. But I think maybe I was just spoiled with one or two of the other models they've released and... This hasn't quite lived up to my brain's idea. My final kind of point on this as well is, I noticed there's this really great shot here of the two uh, characters next to each other, and I'm just a bit perturbed by the height of the on-foot fane, uh, slash sort of Lord on-foot. He, he sort of, I get perhaps there's a suggestion that the shield bearers are squatting slightly maybe, but it looks like he is about head taller than the shield bearers. So he looks massive. And I just fear in particular, if I put him in a unit next to the older plastics like the Quarrelers or the Warriors, is he going to look like massive compared to them? And I'd really like to see him compared to like a Man of the Empire, for example, because um, the height is the only thing that stands out to me as a bit of a worry with that. Um, yeah, so I'd, I, but I don't want to come across too negative. I think overall the figure's great. Um, and there's some really, really enjoyable elements on there. Now, moving on to what I can say comfortably is my favourite uh, thing that they showed us at, uh, at the Adepticon release, which is this beautiful dwarf uh, thane on Oathstone with his uh, musket. And again, we've got this new style plate, this sort of less ordained, slightly modern, modernised plate on the bottom half in which I could leave if I'm honest but there's just lots of details here that I really like I love the nod back to the kind of classics from holding the pipe um, I really like the the handgun the musket I, I don't think I'd ever equip a thane with that but I think the model is really cool and I like it um, the oaf stone's great I think there's there's always been access to plastic oaf stones with the um, with the old Belagar iron hammer kit so the putting him on the Oathstone is definitely an interesting choice, but it does give him, I suppose, like something unique about this model, uh, which is cool. Beard's brilliant. Um, I'm just holding off for a minute, guys. I'm just holding off because I want to get really excited, which is this head. I absolutely love this helmet. I think that the Dwarf Range has been crying out for a helmet like this for a long time. So much Warhammer art um, has had helmets in this style, but we've never had one with this really crisp, high-quality finish. And that this guy's got. I just think this helmet is just a really beautiful thing. It's the thing that makes the model for me. I've even thought about whether I could get this guy and get the head off and get it onto my current Dwarf King on shields. Uh, the fabled Thangar Broadaxe. To, uh, just so I could have this head on my, uh, on my general. I just really love it. So, big fan of this one. Yeah, big fan. Lots of details. Even like the fine detail sculpting on the pipe looks great the face has got bucket loads of character really really beautiful love the kind of detailing on the uh, on the barrel of the of the musket and um and the kind of the i think he's going to have some sort of axe or saying sheathed on his back from what i can see it just it's just really nice just overall just you know just proof that sometimes you haven't got to go wild to make a really great figure just do all the basic stuff really well. And that helmet is gorgeous. It's stand out for me. So uh, this one I really love the look of. Definitely going to get some of my money there. And that brings me on to the final kind of new release. We saw lots of really cool stuff coming back, which is great. But I thought I'd talk about um, that 
in, in a kingly vein, I thought I'd finish with Ungrim Iron Fist. Uh, his triumphant return from what was a very old figure, which I think came out in 5th or 6th ed. Um, I'm sure people will correct me in the comments. Uh, but this model is, for me, a huge step up. I know there's been some discussion about what people think of him online. Um, big change, obviously, no dragon scale cloak, which uh, I'm assuming is going to be for background reasons. He's not going to have killed that dragon yet and done that, but which I think is a shame because I think the cloak could be good, but... Um, I've seen some people saying he's a bit over simple. I couldn't disagree more. I think sometimes, uh, as I just said, doing the simple stuff really well is fantastic. And I love the detail on the helmet on this one. I love the uh, way the axe is kind of putting into the beard. I think it's great. I love the finish on the mohawk um, uh, against the kind of angle of the horns. And this is actually arcs back to what I was saying earlier when I said that helmet with the big horns and the centerpiece. I think where the horns are so close together over the top of the uh, central kind of spine on the helmet, I'm not. that's what I'm not keen on. Whereas this one, you've got nice wide horns and that big brush of kind of hair. For me, it just looks great. Um, and I just think it's a real nice take, real really exciting new take on a classic. I also like the kind of textures on this figure um, as well. You've got that kind of smooth um, half of the axe You've got the really angular kind of um, uh, helmet, sort of crowny bit, if you like. Um, the angular uh, hilt of the axe, if you like. Um, then you've got those really kind of beautiful gems and the smooth rolling uh, metal work on the, on the wrists. You've got chainmail textures, different layers of leather. Um, then you've got that kind of cut against the fur and the skin. There's just lots of kind of textures to paint here. I really think you'll see this model entered for quite a few golden demons. I suppose my only gripe, and I am going to have a little one on this, uh, my only gripe is the axe head for me. I know it's fantasy and I know it's heroic scale and we love a bit of excitement, but for me the axe head is just too big. Um, I just want it to be a bit smaller. Uh, it looks like it runs sort of shoulder to foot in width almost uh, certainly shoulder to ankle in width which is absolutely humongous the 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 axe is gigantic and i think it's a bit too big for me uh, just the axe head just needs to come down maybe 20 percent and i would be absolutely uh, i'd say it'd be absolutely perfect so um i'd suggest that the two full drill models uh, are most definitely fit for a king to use my brilliantly coined uh, title for this video um, particularly that that Thane helmet that's brilliant um, the shield bearers I think there's lots of positive elements uh, with the shield bearers and the Thane on foot the plastic ones um, but uh, it's not perfect for me I'm afraid I think there's still uh, there's still some uh, some some way to go uh, but overall I think it's a really exciting time to be a dwarf I know lots of people are really excited to see these figures and uh, I for one can't wait to see what I can do with them when I get hold of mine um, let me know in the comments what you think of my uh, my impressions and thoughts on these new models. Uh, give us a give us your take uh, and what you're planning on doing with them. If you've got any great conversion ideas, you know I'd love to hear that. I'm always willing to uh, to throw some green stuff at figures. Thanks for joining me once again here on YouTube. Make sure you tag your friends um, and check out all of our other content and head over to TripleCrownWarGaming.com where you can become a knight of the realm today. Remember to tag your friends and like, subscribe, and share. Then head over to triplecrownwargaming.com and become a knight of the realm today. What, what are you doing, mate? Are you alright? Do it!